church. I greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the great head of the Christian church. I want to say thank you. Thank you for your invitation to come here and show the word of God. Yes, sir. Thank you, Elder, for considering me. I just praise God for this opportunity to preach about my Savior and my Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you have your Bibles? Can you turn to 1 Samuel 23? Also, I'd like to thank my wife for coming out. I want to acknowledge my wife, Sister Holly, uh, kids. Thank you for my pastor for coming out and showing his support. Thank you to Minister Chris Brown for his support. It's good to have support. Yes, sir. Amen. It's good to have love, and I'm Amen. appreciative of all those who support and love me. Yes, sir. 1 Samuel 23, verses 19 through 29. 1 Samuel 23, verse 19 through 29. And when you have it, can you say amen? Amen. amen. It reads, Then came up the Ziphites to Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in the strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Achillea, which is on the oh, south of Jesse, Mom. Y'all will have to excuse me. I, I don't really speak Hebrew, so I might mess up on some of the, the words here. <laughs> Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down. And our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hands. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and now and see his place, where his haunt is, and who have seen him there. For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly, subtly. See therefore and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hided himself. And come ye again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you. And it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out through all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Zip before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the plain of the south of Jesimon. And Saul also and his men went to seek him. And they told David, Wherefore he came down into the rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. But Saul and his men could pass David and his men round about to take him. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land and the main verse. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. And therefore they called that place Selah HaMalakuf. And David went up from thence and dwelt in the strongholds of Engedi. Engedi. You may be seated. Now that word Selah HaMalakuf I don't know how to pronounce it. My I asked my pastor to help me pronounce it. But that would be the word we'll be dealing with today. Right. And that word can be interpreted as a rock, the rock of the escape, the rock of the separation, cliff of the vi divisions. And for a brief moment, we will be talking about Jesus Christ, our rock of escape. Yeah. Right. Yeah. First, let us pray. Amen. Father God, we come here tonight to give you glory and honor, Lord. Be with us tonight, Lord. Let what, been, what is about to be said be edifying, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, be with us all, Lord, and strengthen us in your word. Let us grow stronger and stronger each day in your word. And grow stronger and stronger with you, Lord. Let us walk with you, Lord. Let us yes. seek your counsel. Let us seek your knowledge, Lord. Let us seek your truth, Lord. Yes. Lord, just be with us tonight, Lord. Bless be Lord. with the pastor and be with this church, Lord. Yes. Be with yes. them and bless them, Lord. Continue yes. to strengthen them in your word, Lord. We might be few, but we are mighty because we serve yes. yeah. a mighty God. Right. So we give you praise and we give you honor today. Yes. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Christ Jesus is our rock of escape. Yes. He is our solid rock. Mm -hmm. He is the rock that the saints of God 
have always stood upon. Yeah. He is that rock that gives us security, that rock that gives us hope. He gives us joy. Jesus is our security. That's right. He is our security for every battle that we face. Yes, sir. And he was the security for all the saints of God. Yeah. From Adam all the way down to the last saint who will ever have faith in Christ. Amen. This rock is eternal. It is from everlasting to everlasting. Yeah, yeah. All that we have is built upon Jesus. Uh -huh. Without Jesus, we have nothing. Uh -huh. But we have Jesus. So we don't even have to think about that because Christ's riches, they are unsearchable. Yeah. Christ's yeah. power, yeah. they have no limit. All he can right. save. He can keep. Yeah. He can strengthen. All the children of God should rejoice because Christ Jesus is our rock. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tonight yeah. we will glean from the life of King David. Everybody is somewhat familiar with who David is. Yeah. David, a man after God's own heart, yes. of the tribe of Judah, the son of Jesse, grandson yeah. of Obed, yeah. great grandson <laughs> of Boaz and Ruth. Yeah. He was chosen by God. He was used by God. Yeah. David, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote 78 other Psalms. He is the second king of Israel. Mm -hmm. He reigned for 40 years. He is the standard for all of the good kings. Yeah. From David's life, we will see how amazing our rock is. Yeah. We serve a mighty God, Boy, and yeah. he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Here in these verses, David is on the run. King Saul wants him dead. Mm -hmm. He is a fugitive. Mm -hmm. I'm somewhat amazed that the majority of the heroes of the Bible that they were always fugitives and prisoners. <laughs> Moses, Elijah, uh, yeah. Joseph was uh -huh. a prisoner. Yeah. Daniel was cast yeah. into prison. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. of the apostles was prisoners oh, and fugitives. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the name of few. But though they were fugitives and prisoners, they all had the same refuge and liberator. Yeah. And he right. is Jehovah. Yeah. Yeah. It just shows us that God has always been there for his people. Right. Yeah. He has always been that rock for his people. Yes, sir. Yeah. It, and it also shows man's depravity. It shows how much man hates God. Mm. Because man's, God's people have always been persecuted mm. by man. And God's right. word is still hated today. Yeah. But the reason we're not as persecuted as severely as they are mm. is because the church has diluted itself. Mm. Right. It has dimmed the light of God because the church has compromised. Right. And we don't teach sound doctrine like we should. All the right. church allows anything now right. under the cloak of All unity. Right. Wow. I believe in unity. But how can we have fellowship if our reverence of God is not the same? Yeah. How can we have yeah, reverence if we don't have the same view of Jesus, yeah. if we all don't believe that Jesus is God, yeah. if we all don't believe that he is that rock. Right. We yeah. have to have common faith. Yeah. We have to believe in the same thing if we are going to have right. unity. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jesus did in his time, mm. we need to turn some tables upside down. Mm. Right. We have to chase out these right. charlatans. Yeah. We need to shine the light of Jesus and bring glory to his all name right. again. Right. The house of God is a house of prayer. But they have made his house a den of deeds. We worried right. about build, building big buildings and packing out the house, all filling right. all the seats. Amen. But where's the concern yeah. about the souls of men? Yes, we need to be concerned about their yeah. souls yeah. and not about the offering. Yeah. We worried Amen. about different Amen. things, but we need to be worried about the souls. Right. We need yeah. to lead people to Christ. Yeah. But the true church will prevail. Yeah. Yeah. And we will rid ourselves of these gimmicks and get back to the gospel. Yeah. The good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The death, burial, and his resurrection. Yeah. There is hope yeah. if you have faith in Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how did David get to this point of being a fugitive? Wanted for dead. We have to go back to the history. Hmm. When Israel first inhabited the promised land. God didn't give Israel a king because he was their king. Yeah. They had judges that led them from time to time, but they never had a king. But the people wanted a king because they wanted to be like the other nations. Right, right. They was not satisfied with God. Mercy. They thought they needed more. Mm. They rejected God's leadership. Mm. They thought the grass was greener on the other side. But it's not greener on the other side. Mm. You're just not satisfied with what you have. Wow. Because 
Be content with the Lord because he has all that you need. The grass was already green. You just did not appreciate it. The people wanted to be like everybody else. God, so God gave them Saul. How will he saw was everything you would look for in a leader. Scripture says that Saul was a choice young man and a godly man, a goodly man. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any other people. I mistakenly said godly, but you notice that that, is, that does not describe him. That's right. He is not described as godly. He is not described as a person of having faith. Right. He is just described as good. Right. The man would say that he is good. Yes. Outwardly, he was the man for the job. Mm. He was pleasing to the eye. Outwardly. He came from a wealthy family with a well-known name. Yes. He looked like what men say a leader should look like. All right. But looks aren't everything. Yeah. Just because it looks good on the outside right. doesn't mean that it is good. Right. It is not about right. what is on the outside, right. but it's about who is on the inside. Yeah. It's yeah. not about what you possess, yeah. but it's about who, who possesses you. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's just like the devil. The devil was beautiful and was anointed, mm. angel of the Lord. But pride is what done him in. He saw his beauty that none compared to him and his wealth, and he thought he deserved to be worshipped also. Yeah, yeah. The devil thought God should hand the throne over to him. Mm. Pride leads to rebellion, yes, and rebellion does. leads to destruction. Yes. Pride will make you delusional mm. because God will not share his That's glory with it. anybody, Amen. and he will not leave his throne. He would not share his throne because he alone yeah. would sit upon that throne. Yeah. Yes. The devil was cast out because of his rebellion of the Lord. Amen. Disobedience is rebellion. Saul disobeyed the Lord. So Saul rebelled against the Lord. And he did it twice because he, he feared the rejection of the people. Right. He did not trust in the Lord. Yeah. He trusted in self. Right. But self really doesn't help you. Right. Self will get you in a lot of mess. That's right. We have all these issues and problems because of self. Instead of being patient, waiting for Samuel, Saul unlawfully made a sacrifice. He was not a priest. God is specific when it comes to worship, sacrifices, and offerings. It has to be done his way. You can't do it your own way. The same, is today. The same goes for us today. The word of God tells us what we need to do. Amen. So we need to do it his way, yeah. the Bible way, but not how man interprets it yeah. or what they think it should say, yeah. but how it actually says it in the word of God because the Bible is clear on everything. Yeah. And if you are confused about anything, scripture is yeah. its best interpreter. Yeah. 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 So all listen to self. And self led him to disobey. Mm -hmm. His second offense came when God told him to utterly destroy Amalek. Mm -hmm. He was commanded to not leave anything That's but right. destroy it all. He disobeyed the Lord Amen. and kept the best for himself yeah. and his right, men. Right. He didn't even kill the king. His disobedience is the reason his kingdom wasn't established forever. His disobedience caused him to be rejected by the Lord. Yeah. His position was given to another. Mm. It was given to David. Yeah. David wasn't Samuel's first choice because they, Samuel thought it should go to one of the other brothers right. because outwardly <laughs> they had to look. The but, but the Bible says, for the Lord see it not as man see it. Yeah. For man looketh on the outward yeah. appearance, right. but the Lord looketh yeah. on the heart. Yes, you might not be man's first choice. You might not have the right look, or talk how they say you should talk, but you are God's first choice. Yeah. You are not his last choice. You are not his plan B. You have always been his first choice. King David was always intended to be the king of Israel. The people wanted a king like the other kings, like the other nations, so they got a king like the other kings. God raised up Saul to show the people his sovereignty. And God showed them that we don't need what the world offers, but we need what he provides. Because what he provides is better what they can offer. We need his leadership, not the world. We need his protection, not the world. We need his safety, not the world. The world will let you down. But God will never let you down. Yeah. The world will disappoint you, mm -hmm. but God always satisfies. Yeah. The world may say that you nothing, mm -hmm. but we know what God can do with yeah. nothing. Yeah. Just look at the world that we live in. 
Out of nothing, he made something. Yeah. And from the dust, he made a man. Yeah. And from the rib of a man, yeah. he yeah. made a woman. Yeah. Yeah. The world might say that you are the least, mm. but God will make the least great. Yeah. The world might say that you are weak, but Good. God has made the Good. weak Good. strong. Yeah. 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 The world you, might Good say Lord. that you are nothing, <laughs> but God will no. make you something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. God right. will exalt the humble yeah. and lowly. David would be greater than Saul. He was a greater shepherd. When Saul was called by God, his three donkeys was lost. But when David was called, his sheepfold was kept. David was braver. He was a greater leader. Saul was a fearful man and a bad leader. You see that because his army was always fearful and ready to give up. They were scared at Gilgal and they were scared against Goliath. But not David, though. Yeah. David was brave. Yeah. Even though he didn't have on the right military gear, he still went out to fight against Goliath. Right. And he slew Goliath by faith Amen. because he would not have yeah. his Lord be right. blasphemed. Yeah. He was a great military leader. Yeah. And that rubbed up on his army. When they became fearful, he encouraged them with the promises of God. He would ask the Lord for advice. And the Lord would always tell him that the battle was theirs. And that encouraged his soldiers. Yeah. Saul never took the people to God, but David did. Right. While Saul loved being king, David loved his Lord. Yeah. Saul loved the anointing. David loved the anointer. Yeah. David loved God more than his position. He loved God when he was a shepherd. He loved God when he was nothing. He loved God as he was king. He loved God when he was in the caves in the wilderness. Yeah. He loved God in the palace. Yeah. He loved God when it was convenient yeah. and also when his life was in danger. Yeah. No matter where he was at, yeah. he loved the Lord. Love because it. of his love of God, David was a greater king. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to make ourselves anything because God will do that. Yeah. David didn't right. seek to do any of what he did or accomplished. He just served the Lord. That is all that we need to do yeah. is serve the Lord. Yeah. He will elevate us if we need to be elevated. Yeah. He will take us where we need to be yeah. taken. Yeah. He will give us what we need to be given. Yeah. If I am successful, it is because of Him. Yeah. If I am a good father, yeah. it is because of Him. Yeah. If I am a good husband, yeah. it will be because of Him. Yeah. If I am a decent preacher, yeah. it will be because of Him. Yeah. I don't have to try to be anything because yeah. God will qualify me. Yeah. Nowadays, people only care about the perks mm. they can get from God, like prosperity and healing. But it's not about that. The relationship is what is important. Yeah. The fellowship is what is important. Yes, I can be poor in this world, not have a penny to my name, right. but all I want is need is my relationship with God. I can be sick every other day. The doctor can come and tell me I'm dying next week, but that won't hinder my worship Boy, yeah. and fellowship with God. Yeah. I don't serve God to get a blessing. Mm. I am blessed already oh, because God. I know him. I am blessed already because my name is written yeah. in the Lamb's yeah. book of life. Yeah. God knows my name. Yeah. The creator yeah. of this universe and galaxy yeah. knows my name. Yeah. Insignificant me. Yeah. Me in Lebanon, yeah. Tennessee. Out of all the people in this already. world, he knows me. Glory. That is a Blessing. I am blessed already yeah. because his blood covers me. No, I'm not serving to get a blessing, but I'm serving because I am grateful. Oh, yeah. David had greater faith than Saul. Mm. David trusted in the Lord. Mm. That is the difference between David and Saul. Mm. That is what separates these two kings. Yeah. That is what separates us yeah. from the rest of the world. Oh, yeah. What separates us is faith. Faith causes a division. It is not that we are better than they are, but we have a better God than they do. God is the one that makes us better. Without God, we are nothing. But with him, we are royalty. We are joint heirs with Christ. We are princes and princesses. We are a royal priesthood. We are that peculiar people. Our God is real, and their God is not. Our faith works. And their works fail. Mm -hmm. We have someone greater than us yeah. that we can trust in. Yes, sir. All they have is self and man. Mm -hmm. We never hear Saul worshiping God like David did. <laughs> David was a true worshiper. Yeah. He danced before the Lord. Yeah. Saul needed Samuel to hear a word from the Lord. <laughs> but David talked to God Talk himself. To yeah. David prayed that God would make him a good king. Whereas Saul never did that. Mm -hmm. Even though David was greater than Saul, they both had one problem. 
they both were sinners. Yeah. But David, when he was confronted about his sins, yeah. he did the right thing. Yeah. He repented. He asked for mercy. Yes, sir. He asked for forgiveness. Yeah. He asked to be cleansed by the Lord. Yes, he didn't make excuses like Saul did. Mm. Saul didn't repent until he heard that he wouldn't be king anymore. Right. He didn't repent because he offended God, but he repented because of self-preservation, yeah. because he wanted to keep his position. He wanted to remain king. His repentance wasn't sincere. Saul was selfish and a prideful man. His pride was hurt because David was greater. The reason there is hostility between Saul and David is because of jealousy, envy, and hatred. Yeah. David loved and respected Saul, but Saul hated and despised David. He wanted David dead. Yeah. That is like the relationship between the sinner and the saint. We love and have compassion for them. We pray and help them when they are in need. But they hate us, use us, and abuse us, and want us to shut up about our God and faith. And if they see us down, they will kick us while we're down. And they will push us farther down. Saul was jealous of David. He was envious of what the Lord was doing for David. The women were saying, Saul slain his thousand, but David his ten thousand. Aside no right quick. With Saul and David, you see an example of the saints and the devil. The devil envy us. He hates us because we have the Lord's love. He sees what the Lord is doing for us. And he is jealous. Just like Saul, he is always looking for a way to destroy us with temptation and sin. He wants to kill us. The jealousy has so consumed them that they think that they can stop the plan of a sovereign God. But God's plan cannot be changed. Man can't change it. The devil can't change it. No outside nature can change the plan of God. His divine order is set in stone. God does not need an eraser because God does not change. His power will ensure that his word will be accomplished. God said David will sit upon the throne. So guess what? David will sit upon the throne. If God says it's going to happen, you can believe that it's going to happen. Because God's word cannot be broken. Amen. Unlike man, God keeps every one of his promises. Yeah. We see Saul's jealousy and him trying to kill David. First he tried to do David like David did to Uriah the Hittite, Bathsheba yeah. husband. Yeah. Are y'all familiar with that? Yeah. David slept with Bathsheba and she became pregnant and he didn't want to be found out so he sent Uriah out to war to be killed. That is what Saul is doing to him. Saul kept sending David out to battle, but Saul said, let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. But that plan did not work. This only made the people of David more and more, because David won every single battle that he was sent out to. What comes to my mind is what Joseph said, what men do to intend evil, God uses it for good. God used Joseph's brother's hate to get him to Egypt, and, and he in turn became the deliverer when the famine came. He used Pharaoh's pride to set Israel free and show the world his glory and power. He used King Saul's jealousy to make David a decorated war general. Yeah. He used Judas love of money to get him to betray Jesus so he could go to the cross. Amen. He used Saul's hatred for Christians to spread the gospel uh -huh. to the uttermost parts of the world. Yeah.